President Putin reveals Jesus is a black man. We stand on the precipice of a monumental revelation, a moment that redefines Todos, not only our understanding of history, but also the path forward for our great nation. In an extraordinary discovery hidden beneath centuries of lore and legend, we have opened what can only be described as the oldest vault known to mankind. What we found within its ancient confines challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and heralds a new dawn for our country. Within this vault, we discovered figures of bi biblical proportions, characters that many have read about, debated and revered. These figures, preserved against the sands of time, reveal a truth that is as profound as it is transformative. They are all black. This revelation, this undeniable truth, stands before us not as a contradiction to our faith, but as a testament to the diversity and unity that faith embodies. As your president, I see this moment not as a challenge to our beliefs, but as an opportunity to embrace a wider, more inclusive understanding of our history and spirituality. Russia, in its rich tapestry. Did you know that white folks knew that Jesus? Did you black people ever forget one thing? The man that helped Jesus carry that cross was a black man. And don't ever forget another thing. Jesus belongs to Africa as much as he does to Europe and Asia. He was born in that part of the world that touches Africa and Asia and Europe, and Jesus was not a white man like me, nor was he as black as some of you. We don't know what the color of his skin, but it must have been a dark color like the people of his day because he was a man like them. Don't ever say it's a white man's religion or a black man's religion. It's a world religion. He belongs to the world. It is written in the holy books that in the end times there will come a time where we will have false Christs, we will have false prophets. These people will be even able to make miracles and they will deceive as many people as possible. If possible, if possible, these people would even be capable of misleading the elect. The elects are people who have, who, whom God have selected to be one of his own. Right now we have people coming all over the place saying that Jesus Christ was not black. Jesus Christ was not white. What I personally believe is that, is that Jesus Christ was neither black. Jesus Christ was neither white. What Jesus Christ looked like, he looked like the people of his times. Listen to this interview and then I'll give you my thoughts and we'll discuss further where we'll have a critical analysis by the end of the video. What color was he? Jesus was a human. If you're a Christian, you believe that he was uh, the second son of the Blessed Trinity. He was uh, the son of God. He was divine, but he was expressed as, in his 33 years on earth as a human being. And now coming forward are not a few very, very active people to say that the presentation of a white Jesus down through history before people of color has served to characterize the Caucasian as superior, Correct. as the best, Correct. as better than others. Right. And more than that, has perpetuated a lie on the people of color and continued their enslavement. That's right. Here's who's here. Blair Underwood joins us yeah. from L.A. Law. Blair, Blair needs no lecture on this. A lot of black folks don't go for this black Jesus at all. Been 
praying to a white Jesus all their lives. Mm -hmm. This is their Jesus. And no activist of the moment is going to come along and rip that imagery out of their soul. Mm -hmm. And they're just as proud of their blackness as anybody else. It doesn't have to do with all this psychological stuff that you newfangled people <laughs> keep bringing on. <laughs> Blair uh, Underwood has produced a, uh, it's, it, you know, it's mis misleading to call it a movie. It's a 30-minute uh, short, short film. Yeah, a 30-minute film in which he plays Jesus. Let me show you just a piece of that, Blair, and then we'll, we'll gab here a little bit. Jesus, this is the crucifixion. This is right at the beginning of the film. Just a moment to show you. Watch. the beginning of the film uh, titled The Second Coming which was written, produced and as you see uh, starred in by uh, Blair Underwood um, you should also know without giving the story of this film away that the historical Jesus then uh, appears in your film as a contemporary black male right. who is in a mental institution and they're scared to death of this guy and I mean almost to the point where you know they're just Beat, beating him down. Did the Rodney King thing inspire you? Oh, most definitely. Uh, I have talked, I've been very outspoken about things that I have dealt with with the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, friends of mine, uh, young African American males with the so-called justice system. And when the Rodney King, the first verdict, came out a year ago, it hit me. Said, I said, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a so-called celebrity. It doesn't matter if you're Rodney King. Even Christ if he were a man of color were to come back, he would be treated the same way. So in the film, that's why he's accused of this, this heinous crime without giving too much of it away. But I, I, I need to make the point before Please we get do. into this, because this Go. can get very heated as it has before. Well, I don't know. We got a pretty, <laughs> well, a pretty thoughtful audience here. You know, uh, they will offer their own insightful, civilly oh, course, uh, structured commentary here in just a moment. <laughs> but it's important for people to realize that this film is not about dividing people. You've seen, this audience has seen the film. It's about understanding. It's about enlightenment. It's about what this man, Jesus, whatever he looked like, yeah. what he taught, his philosophy yeah. of love. But we're dealing with this historical figure. Yes, uh, we are. Uh, uh, what color was he, Blair, in your own... Are you, you are a Christian? Yes, I am. You were raised a Christian. Yes. And, uh, you, you know, this is not an investigation, but, I mean, was it you better get to church or mama's going to have to know why? I don't know. I, it was pretty much like that, yeah. Um, all right, so that you... Uh, 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 was it Baptist? Baptist. All right, so you sang all those hymns to Jesus, and I'm sure that Jesus in, throughout your childhood was white. Is that so? Uh, that's, that's correct, but we were always told that he was a man of color. Before we get into it, you have to understand what is black. What is blackness? Blackness is one of three things. It's either a perception, what you see. When you look at me, Phil, you see a man of a darker hue. It's either a state of mind, a consciousness. That's why I have friends of mine who are white, and, you'll say, and, and, and they know more about African-American heritage and culture than some black people. And you'll say, well, this, this white guy, he's black. He's a brother. Thirdly, when we talk about blackness, it's defined by your ancestral lineage, your gene genealogical line. If you go to the genealogical line of Jesus, there are people of color throughout his lineage completely. And it, it, the thing is, before anybody can take issue with this film or with this entire issue, and it's not a novel idea, the significance of this film is it's never been on camera. A black Jesus has never been on camera. Right. Certainly not a crucifixion. Um, so it, it's been there. And, it, and it's important to establish yeah. that because of all the things you say, we talk about right. the justice system. Well, but, but once we get beyond that, then, and only then, it becomes relevant. Yeah, what let me just, like. I want to make sure I understand your position here, Blair. Um, you do seem to be finessing a bit. Uh, the color is a matter of the heart. And mm -hmm. you're right, there are bl white people who have been so very, very uh, exemplary in their continued effort to ensure that the civil rights of all people are, are protected. Mm -hmm. that, that people of color, minorities, have started to refer to them as brother or sister. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Mm -hmm. um, but they're still white. I, I think you are, you are suggesting that there's some pretty good historical, anthropological evidence suggesting that Jesus just probably was black. Am I correctly stating your... Uh, 
Fed. That's right. You are, okay. In that, was he a Jewish black guy? To, and, and do oh, we, there's no question. We're talking about was. a Jewish man from Jerusalem who more than likely, there were no camcorders or Polaroid cameras then, but more than likely had to have been a man of color. We're are talking you, about probabilities. Are you there, caller? Uh, yes, Phil. Uh, I just want to say that when God said he was going to make man in his image, he did not mean white, green, or any color. It was supposed to be spiritually like him. Very good. And that's what is important. Well, yes, yeah, well... Thank Wait you, a minute. Phil. Oh, hold Thank it. You, Phil. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that's that's. I tell you, caller, I, I very much appreciate your thoughtful comment. Except you are kissing a baby here, uh, and you're waving a flag. These politically active people who want to, uh, as you'll see in a moment, there are people who are taking down the white Jesus because that is he was he was he has been presented for 2,000 years before peoples of all color as a, Corca a Caucasian, oh European... I got through. Europe... Oh, we got... You got two lines coming in on one. That's a pretty good sign, Blair. You've kind of rung the bell here <laughs> with the phone call. So please don't miss the point. It's not enough to say, hey, we're all God's children. If you continue to present Jesus this way before little African-American children or people of color all over the world, they grow up somehow believing that way down inside, white is better. Thank you. Plus the fact that we're talking about the historical figure. We are created in God's image, in God's image, but this man, Jesus, the actual yeah. human being we're speaking of. Are you there, caller? Is yes, I am. You wanted to say. Yeah, I wanted to say, I'm a 32-year-old white female who was raised Catholic, and I, I just have to say that no matter if Jesus is black, white, green, red, I believe in the supreme being, and yeah. I think that's what we all have Very to good. look may at. I ask the, and, may I ask the Catholic this question? Yes. How, would it be okay with, uh, do you, I assume you're a churchgoer? Well, no, not as much as I was. Well, but you've been, all right, well, that's not just, uh, would you, uh, would you, would you approve of your uh, pastor changing the color of Jesus' statues to black in your church? If that was what my church did, that, as I view... I don't look at a picture of Jesus and say, oh, that's Jesus. I have a feeling within me right. that there's a supreme well, being, but what and it color has matter what, what color. color has Jesus been throughout your childhood? White, and what I color, think that's ridiculous. Because, what color was his mother? You know, who knows? And I don't think anyone... I don't think any... Those people that are on your show that there are... Were, I must tell you this. I'm older than you are, but uh, there were no black statues in my childhood. Well, right. There, I mean everybody. St. Teresa, Joseph, everybody. Everybody. I had a guardian angel was white. Right. They were all white. And I'm just saying, but just because that's how we were raised doesn't mean, doesn't mean that we have to be so narrow-minded and so focused Blair agrees, I'm sure. We yeah, can't but... open up our minds and our hearts to something different. She's missing the point. It, it is twofold. You have to answer this question twofold. It's important because when you speak of this man, when all the evidence points to that, it's an affirmation of people of color. I'm speaking of Latino, Asian, African Americans, Na Native Americans, people of color. It's an affirmation of our place in history that we contributed. I'm telling you, people wonder why there are riots and why there are bl uh, blacks and Latinos in jail so much. There's no self-image. Right. When, you, when, you, when you deal with revisionist history that's been revised and altered as it has, it deals with your self-image and you don't care about life anymore. The Reverend uh, George Stallings, now uh, referred to as bishop, former Catholic priest, since has split himself from mainstream Catholicism, has his own church, Washington, D.C. He preaches a sermon. Here he is, Good Friday of this year, the Reverend Stallings from Washington. We must make one thing clear on this Good Friday, that the Jesus of history that you saw walking up the street just a few minutes ago is only an imposter. The white Christ is only a figment of Michelangelo's imagination. The white Christ is an imposter of white Christianity. Now, what I'm seeing is we're starting to divide. It's not about dividing people. It's about speaking about the truth. And then, that's the second fold of the question, you have to deal with this man. This man was about love. This man was about embracing everybody. This man was about forgiveness. This man was about enlightenment. This man was about tolerance. 
And that's what this film that we did, The Second Coming, is about. Tolerance for each other and tolerance for each other's religious beliefs. I have to say, and I have to make this point, with all respect to Archbishop Stallings, I don't agree with tearing down other images. You can't, you can't force people to believe like you believe. I believe in speaking about the truth. Uh, speaking of tearing down, here, here is, uh, here is uh, the Reverend Stallings. I'll tell you what, uh, whether you're on Saturday Night Live or standing in this public square in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, seems everybody's putting the match to something today. Um, so, uh, so this is not going to be uh, met with the approval of everybody. Uh, some people communicate differently than others. And That's if I'm understanding Mr. Underwood, you are, among other things, saying that uh, you believe it can be uh, established very credibly that Jesus was a man of color. And that, uh, you, uh, if I'm understanding you, you have a certain empathy for those, especially those older Christians of all colors who have spent a lifetime worshiping a white Jesus. You're not going to go in there and break anybody's statue. But you are stepping forward to say... I'm stepping forward 2,000 years later. You have to understand the initial images of Christ and the Madonna right. and countries like Poland, Spain, Italy, these are white Caucasian countries, right. worship a black, a black Madonna, Madonna and a black right. Jesus. Right. These images were altered and changed. Right. Are, you, are you there? Call her high. Hi, Donahue. Hi. I'm calling from uh, Pennsylvania, and I'm a white female, and I don't see where there's any difference in whether or not Jesus is black, just like the first caller. Uh, first, I'd like to commend Blair Underwood for the relevance of what this is bringing out to the surface. Um, uh, in these day and ages, people need to get beyond the color factor. Yes. Uh, who we pray to does not matter. No. Uh, we were created in his image. Uh, if I go to heaven, I might see him as white. Uh, if someone else goes to heaven, they might see him as, as black. Who do we know what we're going to perceive him as? Well, except that we are left to uh, at least leave the door open for at least an inquiry, as Mr. Underwood has already offered us with his film titled uh, The Second Coming. I agree. Uh, if, if we accept the humanity of Jesus, that Jesus was that Jesus was a human being who happened to be divine, and that is traditional Christian doctrine, then we have to deal with his ethnicity. And that's what uh, Blair is doing. I'm glad you called, Pennsylvania. Are you there? You had a brief comment. Go ahead. Yes. I would like to say that, number one, yes, Jesus Christ was a black man. Jesus Christ was from the Mediterranean region. And if you were to read in your Bible, it will tell you that he had matted hair and webbed feet. White people always said that Christ, uh, black people had webbed feet. But that's not the issue here. The issue is, look to the true facts. Right. Over in the Mediterranean, people were of dark skin. You know this Revelations quote? Revelations 1 this? verse 15. Yeah. You know yeah. this? You want to talk about it? Here uh, we go. As you know, the Bible is, of course, I'm a brilliant uh, biblical scholar, but... Uh, uh, here's from Revelation. His head and his hairs were white, like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fire, fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So the, right. it's the brass metaphor that, you've, that you think lends support to, to his being a person. That is what you usually hear, the brass metaphor and also about the hair. But more specifically, like I said before, because that can be talked away and rationalized away into symbolism. Yes, it can. I'm talking about the ancestral lineage of this man. And in fact, as scientists have told us, we all come, and the first man and woman were black. So really, we all have <laughs> yes. blackness in us. Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Hi, Blair. Hi. Hi. Hi, Jill. Hi. Um, I am a white Christian woman, and I believe, um, I agree with um, Blair that... You're five for five. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I agree. I, I believe just because of geographically where Jesus was born, that he was of color. I don't know particularly what shade, but I know he was of color. And I also think that, you know, when it comes down to it, everyone who's a Christian believes in Jesus' blood, and that's what matters, the color of his blood. I do thank you for your call. Uh, I assume uh, Blair is uh, encouraged by the support you're receiving. You come out here waiting to uh, hear some self-righteous white Christians stand up and say, who do you think you are messing with my Jesus? Well, that is part of it. We, we have gotten that, and we will get more of that. But these are people who have missed the point. And we'll be back.
to talk to young people, white and of color, about this issue. We'll talk to a leading member of the Baptist National Baptist Convention from uh, Indiana, uh, as well as other Christian uh, people about how they feel about the effort to re-examine the man who was called Jesus. What color was he? And we'll be back in just a moment. The yes, you wanted to say. Oh, um, the Reverend that was shown on the TV, yes. him, I think that was as bad as what Sinead O'Connor did when she ripped up the Pope. You don't think face. Sinead O'Connor should have ripped up no, the picture of the Pope and you don't think wrong, he should But be. what he did was 20 times worse, and yes. I haven't heard a word about what he yes. did. Uh-oh. Yes, I would just like to say that Deuteronomy tell you you're not supposed to use these images anyhow. Read your Bible. Right. Yes, Jesus was black, and he's coming back again. He wants you to get your act together. Cain, Hope, Felder, thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I don't want the Lord to have Yeah. Um, first of all, I want to commend you, brother, uh, truth. Uh, the spiritual significance of Jesus Christ is that uh, African Americans have suffered from institutional racism which uh, diminishes their spiritual and cultural self-esteem because of the color of, of Christ. These and that should not go unnoticed. Commend you, brother. Bless these you. These young people have been asked to be with us. Some not so young people. <laughs> you just might be older than the host here. Um, well, then I should be deferential to you and to your age, sir, and I will. These are uh, people who are church active, and I think most are Christians and want you to know that I think you all uh, are very supportive of Blair's effort to share with uh, the nation and the world uh, the idea that Jesus was a man of color. Kane Hope Felder, PhD, joins us. You're a professor at Howard University School of Divinity. Uh, and you wanted to say what about this issue? I want to say, first of all, it's important to recognize that the Bible is uh, represents a world before color prejudice. The Bible represents a world that has a very favorable attitude towards blacks. It's a multicultural world. Yes, it is. One of the great tragedies has been that in the last 400 years, Europeans and white Americans have created the whole ideology of white supremacy and they have in the process taken the images, sacred images as well as secular images of, that are victorious and positive and made those uh, images white right. uh, and, uh, and by the same token they have recast black into a negative image. And I think that is a very important thing to keep in mind here. We are interested in corrective historiography, setting the record straight right. so that our people, African American people, will begin to sense, as I think was pointed out in a very wonderful yes. way earlier, yes. uh, have much uh, in history yes. that has been neglected. It is not a reach to suggest that the slave who worshipped on Sunday, the Messiah who was Jesus, who was white in all his uh, temporal uh, manifestations as offered to us by Michelangelo and other of the classical artists over the centuries yes. would be likely to bring the same kind of uh, obsequious deference to the slave master who was white as well so I think you are here to say among other things that inside there's nothing overt about this and it's an it's insidious but it's there is the notion that somehow white people are to be obeyed respected and looked up to by the slave. Particularly when the white slave master has a whip and a gun to the slave's head. Particularly when uh, this, this image uh, is presented in such a way that the black has no option. He, the black cannot believe anything else. It cannot even suspect, can't even express right. uh, 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 anything but the quiet inner pain of seeing the inconsistency between the whole teachings about a, a God of love and somehow the Bible is being used to keep them oppressed and feeling negative about themselves. And that is a tradition that we have received in America and the average white person needs to be instructed on these matters, not just young black kids. The average white person in America is as misinformed and, and miseducated as the average black person. And I think that this is a very substantial issue in all of the colleges and the universities in this country. Muhammad Ali called our attention a long time ago to the color of devil's food cake and angel food cake. Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Is the caller there? Probably a good idea if I push the button. <laughs> Hello? Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. You wanted to say. Yes. 
uh, if Jesus is supposed to be black all of a sudden, why wasn't he portrayed as black 2,000 years ago? Why did they start him out as white and all of a sudden he's black? Uh, you got a lot of white reporters intervening. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a, a, you know, I mean, I think these folks are suggesting that the image of Jesus was co-opted by the white establishment over the years. All the, all the artists were white. They were all liars then. They were, well, liars, I mean. Right, yeah. then they well, all lied. Imagine saying over if one, over, black, to, to the caller, I yeah. want to say this to the caller. Over 100 references to, to Egypt are in the Bible. Over, over 50 references to biblical Ethiopia, which is present day Sudan, are in the Bible. Old Testament and New Testament. Bible scholars, most of whom have been white, have translated and interpreted the Bible in a way that would be distinctly favorable to Europe and a way that would be distinctly unfavorable yeah. to Africans and people of color. Yeah. And this is an issue that we really have been suffering under for a long time. And we'll be okay, back. Hey, I got a break, call. I'm truly sorry. <laughs> Give us a one-liner and I got to get out of here. I, in that case, we can't believe the Bible either. If you're right, she's right. Well, now, just be careful here. Uh... And we'll be back in just a moment. Hi, thanks for waiting, caller. You wanted to say briefly. Yes, Phil, I'm a black female and I'm married to a white male. And my in-laws are so prejudiced against me. Now, I just wonder what's going to happen to all these people that are so prejudiced and so hateful towards black folks when they do see a black Jesus, if it is a black Jesus, and what is going to happen to the most of the media that has just yeah. been terrible to black media, what are they going to say then? Yeah. Uh, it, well, first of all, uh, there's not going to be one decision about what color Jesus may right. be in your church. This would obviously be something that uh, the church itself, uh, incidentally, many churches have already made this uh, right. step forward. Right. Not a few are uh, predominantly black churches in urban areas. Um, hang on a minute, caller, uh, because next to uh, Dr. Felder is uh, Kareen Stewart. You're a real live 15-year-old uh, teenager. Well, we should know how you feel, uh, Mr. Stewart, sir. Uh, what are your thoughts about this issue? Well, I just think that throughout history, our history has been denied. If you look at, we know we don't have to just look at Jesus. We could go back to Cleopatra when when they was played Cleopatra. We didn't see that on television. We saw a white woman's Cleopatra. We saw Moses on television portrayed as a white man. Yeah. You know? But this is not something new. This is not something that just jumped out the cracks all of a sudden. This, we have been yeah. discussing this for a while. What inspires you, Corrine? You're very, obviously you've done your own scholarship on this. At age 15, you were raised in a Christian church, huh? Yes. Did you sing in the choir? I mean, were you there every Sunday? Now, don't yes, lie to us. I, I sang Kareem. in the choir. My mother, my mother had me to come. I bet she did. <laughs> yeah. Well, are, are you still singing in the choir, Kareem? This is none of our business, uh, so you want to take the fifth. Go uh, ahead. I can't. I can't. I'll tell you, I don't sing in the choir because I can't sing. Oh. <laughs> uh, very good. Another, another stereotype yes, down the drain. Is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Very good point. And you're probably uh, not too good with a three-point uh, three basketball shot either. So let's put down a lot of these uh, stereotypes while we're at it. You're, you're, um, you, uh, you're inspired to look into this how, uh, Kareem? Well, like most children and stuff, I really didn't pay any attention to it. When we walked through the church, Jesus was white, Mary was white. Heck, every picture on the wall was white. But then one day I just took a step back and looked and thought about why is this? Why do we have these images? Where are we? We didn't, we're not just slaves. We are more than ex-slaves. We're from Africa. We have a very rich heritage. We were the first architects. We built pyramids. We were the first astrologers. So I just, take a, I just took a step back and said, heck, we're not this. We're more than gang members. We're more than killers, basketball players, musicians, entertainers. And I think it's the, it's the time. It's the time. It was time 25 years ago when Martin Luther King was assassinated, when Malcolm X was assassinated. I want somebody else to step up to the front plate. It's not, we just shouldn't sit here and just say, oh, well, heck, they let us go to a bathroom. It's time for us to change this. And we'll be back.
just a moment. I'm glad you called. Caller, you had a brief comment. Um, yes, I'm an uh, African-American female who's about to become a mother. And my comment is um, in reference to the depiction of yes. biblical characters throughout the year. If it wasn't such a big issue, then they would also involve people of color throughout the year. Right. I mean, what am I supposed to tell my child when it's born when it says, Mommy, why isn't there people my color up there? Yes. You're thinking, Mom. Your wheels are turning. Uh, Santa because Claus. I grew up in a household where there was a white Jesus or Caucasian person depicted. Yes. Yeah. And you, you never saw anyone of color. It's right. like we didn't exist. Hang on a minute. Reach, reach. Jesus' role was a man of love. What I'm seeing and hearing isn't but sack religious. You, in other words, Jesus is what color? Jesus' role was a, was a man who taught love. What color? Was color it? has nothing to do yes. with it. All right, so oh. in reality, yes. Jesus was bronze. What do you got? Okay? But what I'm seeing and hearing right. is nothing but sacrilegious. Destroying of the pictures. You're it's horrible. Right. It's You're right. Right. I'm hearing this destroying the pictures here. Yeah. Um, if, if, if you look in the Bible, it tells you that the first man, Adam, was formed from the dust. Dust is not white. And the well. Bible says that Jesus is the second man, Adam. All right. So how Excuse could, me. All right, now, we're going to have a lot of biblical no. stuff from you. No, no, no. Because I want you to know something. I don't want to get any arguments with you. <laughs> uh, you wanted to say briefly what, sir? I'm going to ask a question, and that is why it is uh, uh, everybody's up in arms about the truth. The truth of the matter that Jesus was not a European Caucasian person. He was a person of color. Now, the white people have determined what color is. If you're not white, then you're Very black. Good. So Very that good. means that you Jesus know, Christ was, oh, of course, Dr. Felder is the leading scholar in this field. Wendy Reitmeyer is here. You get to talk today, Wendy. <laughs> you say, among other things, that it shouldn't matter. That's the first That's thing right. I think you want to know. That's what right. else would you like to share with this audience? May we assume you are a good Christian person? Yes. Doesn't yes. have your age here, so I don't know if 28. I'm a lot. Uh, tw you're 28. Uh -huh. Kindly tell us what you think. Um, I really don't think it should matter. I think that if you really believe that it ca changes how you feel about him, then maybe you should reevaluate your relationship with him. You know, it's either, it doesn't matter if he's black or white because it's stated again and again and again in the Bible that he, he walked through all the nations. It didn't matter who they were. He loved him regardless. Would it upset you if, 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 his, uh, if he's pr portrayed as black? No. Wouldn't? No. So, uh, if that would be the choice of certain congregations and within the Christian tradition, that's okay with you. Sure. Uh, well, guess who else is here? <clears throat> so, remember, in the good book, we are told that in the end times, there shall rise false Christ, false prophets, and these people shall mislead so many with everything that is happening right now. Guys, you have to be cautious of what you consume. You have to be cautious of what you call knowledge. Sometimes there is fruit of knowledge of good and bad. You don't want to eat from that fruit because when you eat from that fruit, you shall die. Don't say you are not warned. Everything you see on the internet, do not believe. Everything that you see on the internet, you have to be scrutinizing it. See if it is true. Be skeptical by any means possible for you to achieve the pure grain of truth. So, you know, there is something really bothering my attention right now. Um, the thing I'm speaking about is um, Russia and Putin and the black Jesus, you know. I've seen the videos working so well on YouTube and I've been holding my horses because if there is something I never want to do, if there is videos I never want to touch on, it's religion. Mm -mm. Religion is a thing that I'm always trying not to talk about, no matter in religion. Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Sikhism, whichever, I never want to talk about it. However, last night, I, something came into my mind and I was like, you know, I have to say something, at least give my opinion on this. Everyone is giving their opinion. Everyone is saying that Jesus was black. What does Evans from Kenya has to say about this conspiracy that Putin is feeding the world? Putin is just opening books. That is what we are told. However, 
there's one thing I have to tell you. Jesus Christ was neither black nor white. No. Think of them as the people of Middle East. The people of Middle East are not white or black. Actually, the modern people of Middle East are not the original, original, original kind. You know? We've had a lot of uh, migration. We've had a lot of intermarriages, uh, interracial marriages with one another. And so the original has, lo has been lost, you know. The original has been lost. It is within Africa is where you only find indigenous people. Africa is the only continent with indigenous people, which makes you think, who is an indigenous person? An indigenous person is somebody who is close, 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 and closest to the people who were once there in the first time the land was formed, you know? In Kenya, the original inhabitants were the Khoisan. Yes, Kenya, Khoisan. The Khoisan were all over Africa, you know? In Kenya, they were there. And also, we have another tribe called the Maasai. The Maasai are also the original inhabitants. But the first people were the Khoisan. The Khoisan then migrated to the lower parts of Africa. And myself, my tribe... I come from a parent tribe, a parent tribe group called the Nilots. The Nilots are what has given uh, the Maasai, the Luo, the, we have so many of them, the Samburu. We have distinct features that identify us as Nilots. And then we have the Bantus, and then we have the Semites, and then we have the Kushites. You know, the Bantus came all the way from Congo Forest. That was the original place. Congo forest. And for the Nilots, it was Sudan, a place called Bar El Gazelle. You know, for the Semites and the Kushites, it was, it was along the Horn of Africa, Egypt and the Horn of Africa. But East Africa, it was the Khoisan, you know. So when saying that Jesus was black and not white, it's all wrong. Jesus was not black and Jesus was not white. Jesus was like the people of his own times. He was like that. He had to become like them, you know. It does not serve any justice or it does not make someone feel low of themselves by saying they are of this race or of they are of that race. The good books are so clear. Jesus Christ is a descendant of David. Jesus Christ is a descendant of King Solomon. He is from that lineage, Judah. Judah was one of the sons of Jacob, you know. If you come to look at it, if Judah was black, then Jesus was black. Jesus was neither black nor white. Jesus was, like, was a Middle Eastern person. You know how the Middle Eastern people look like? They look like the Arabs and they're not the Arabs. Not the Arabs of today and not the Israelis of today. In Middle East, we have three kinds. We have the Jews, we have the Arabs, and then we have the Persians. The Persians have occupied Iran. Iran is Iran at in the past it was called um, Persia. It changed its name to Iran. Iranians are not original Arabs. Point of correction. And we have the Arabs. Remember in the holy books. I have one. You might think I don't have one. Let me show you. I have here the good books. The good book. This is my good book. I'm not saying that I'm always into reading this good book. No, Holy Bible. English Standard Version. It's the English Standard Version. I understand the thing with the King James Version. But I found this one easy to read, easy to understand. It's the book I'm using right now. And so, remember, Jacob was the son of Isaac. Jacob had a brother called Esau. You get me? Isaac was the son of Abraham. Abraham is the father of Israel. Abraham is the father of Israel. Where God told him, I will multiply generations like, this, like the sons of the sea. 
before Abra, before Isaac was given birth to, because Sarah had some complication with her giving birth, Abraham laid with his worker. And this worker gave birth to a son. The son was called Ishmael. This son called Ishmael was the firstborn in the house of Abraham, but he was the illegitimate son. God did not identify him as is as illegitimate. No. God did not identify him for that. Actually God defended Sarah because Sarah started bringing complications with her because it is Sarah who brought Hagar to Abraham telling him let him give you a child because Sarah had those complications. Later on Sarah is having problems with this lady she introduced to her husband. It forces Abraham to tell Sarah to tell Hagar and her son, You gotta leave. My wife is not comfortable with you, you got to leave. And so Hagar and his son Ishmael they leave. And listen to this. Abraham was saddened for what he did. Ishmael was his blood, his blood. So he has those genes. Ishmael has those genes. And it was in the desert. The Middle East is a very, very strong desert. Very, very strong desert. It's, it's so hard to survive there. And he led them away to the unknown, to the uncertainties. The book of Genesis continues to tell us that God with his mercies and kindness did not let them die. He did something for them at the desert. And when God says he does something, he really does. God made sure that Ishmael survived. And from Ishmael is where we get the Islamic religion. Now this is my opinion. From Ishmael is now where we get the Islamic religion. Ishmael brought Islamic religion. And from Isaac, we get the Judaism. And from Isaac is where we get the Christianity. You get me? These people are cousins. They are cousins. And so, Jesus Christ was not black, no white. Jesus Christ was a Middle Eastern. He was from all the... He, was, he has the genetics of Abraham. He has the genetics of Isaac. He has the genetics of um, Jacob. He has the genetics of Judah. He has the genetics of Jesse. He has the genetics of David. He has the genetics of so and so. There is so many people along the line until you get to Joseph and Mary. You understand? So Jesus Christ is not black. Jesus Christ is not white. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. God might ask me, Evans, why didn't you say something about this? I have. I've just told you what my mind is about. I don't think Jesus Christ was black. I don't think he was white. Jesus Christ was Middle Eastern. The people of his times. Jesus Christ resembled the people of his times. Not the people we have today. Maybe the people of his times had woolly hair. They had the skin like bronze. But he resembled the people of his times. He was neither black nor white. God has no color. God created him, Adam, in his own image and likeness. And so myself as black here, I resemble God. Whoever is watching this video, white, whichever, whichever. You resemble the image of God. Jesus Christ is not black. Jesus Christ is not white. That is all I know. And I've, I have been confirmed. I have confirmed it by this book. The Holy Book. The Holy Bible. That is what confirms my knowledge. And so, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more awareness, kindly do subscribe to the channel. Give the video super thanks. And remember to subscribe, share, uh, become a member of the YouTube partnership uh, become a member of my become my YouTube member. Yeah. So thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Remember Jesus was not black, nor was he white. He was like the people of his times. The people of his times, where he was at this space and the time, it was Middle East.
So he was neither black nor white, but like the people of his times. Thank you so much and um, see you in the next one.